Um, you know, just just kind of rewind back to Tulane. You know, just super proud of our group. Um, you know, we had a really good week of practice last week, probably like a lot of teams in the country. You know, you look up and you got a few guys bunged up here and there. But, um, you know, the group we took there knew, uh, I guess, you know, been on the road as much as we have. We've kind of figured out what that thing looks like. And, you know, as I tell them all the time, you just got to be better. You know, you got to be better on the road. You got to come together more. You got to have more energy. Uh, I think we were super physical. Uh, against a, a good team, you know, and I know obviously with the with the two teams they had played, um, you know, they they had a couple losses, but we knew this was a really good team. We knew they were really going to be good at home as well. Knew they were not going to quit, so you know we jumped out to that really good lead. Um, you know, a little disappointed, you know, giving that one up obviously right before half, but then we came back second half and settled in, and then had to fight for our lives right there at the end. Um, but once again, I think those are the things that'll make us better. You know, as the season goes on, that we had to find a way to win that thing in the end on the road. But just super proud of them. A lot of great effort throughout. And now we turn to Liberty, who you know I I really thought would probably be undefeated coming in, lost to Syracuse at their place. I know it's a big game for Syracuse after losing Liberty pretty handily last year, uh, and, and Liberty had their chances to win the game. Very well coached. Uh, you know, got one of the best players in the country at at any level. Um, you know, who, who leads them on offense, quarterback, and, and then just good all around. You know, well coached, good in all three phases, dynamic offensively, obviously. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a work cut out for us. And then we'll be talking about, obviously, the, the game we've been talking about for a long time, which is our first chance to be in our new stadium. Could not be more excited. Um, hope we got that thing packed out. I believe we will. Uh, the environment is really going to be that great. Uh, so just cannot wait to get in there and, and just get back home, you know, around our fans and folks who, you know, we've we've had so much success with at Legion, and now to get to be at our home stadium is just going to be terrific. So we're excited. We got a lot of work to do against a, a great team, and um, should be fun. So questions? Uh, Coach, I'll yeah. ask, uh, if you have questions, please use the microphone. With everything going on this week, uh, just a lot of distraction uh, for you, this team. You know, how do you keep your guys focused? Yeah, I think that's something we talk about all the time. You know, it's all about all about what we do on the field and how we take care of each other and how we prepare. I think all we got to do is cut the film on with Liberty and see how good they are. You know, and I know they've heard a lot about them, so that's that should be it. We talk about it all the time, and uh, you know, but that is that's a case of you know, let's not let all the stuff that's going around us take away from what we've got to do to get ready for the game. Coach, I'm going to greet you this morning, not with good morning, but Merry Christmas. To what degree is this week uh, or the anticipation for this week like Yuletide? Yeah, I mean, I think for so many reasons. I mean, we could be up here all day just talking about all the reasons it's special for our program. You know, the history of what's happened to us and bringing the program back and really having the dream of building a stadium for our city you know, for all the people that came together. And this is such a great story because so many different groups had to come together to make this stadium happen. I mean, it was truly a team effort, really in something where, that a lot of people said would never happen. And then to see it and see it really this special and where it's at. And, you know, there's going to be so many other great benefits for, you know, for our program, for the city. Um, it's just, it really is that special, you know, for all the things we all had to go through to make it happen. So, really excited. Bill, this really is like a new life for UAB football. What are some of the new traditions that you guys are going to want to create at the new stadium? Well, that's a great question, Joe. I mean, I think just from the, the walk, you know, we're going to come right there down that plaza, you know, which is between all the restaurants right there by the hotel. Uh, that's going to be a great blazer walk tradition that we start. I think getting our fans in the stadium, you know, I think I've talked to a lot of folks about, you know, me and you even talked about what the songs look like. Um, pre-game, what can we do? Because it's going to be a great experience out there. You know, there's going to be food trucks and a lot of fun, and you got all that stuff. But we got to get everybody in the stadium for the kickoff, and we're going to need them. You know, and um, you know, I hate to, as I said the other day when I had to speak after the Georgia game. You know, I said I really don't want to speak about that game, but I will talk about when I saw their faint, their students come in. I mean, you know, we're literally walking on the field, and they let their students come in. And it was amazing to see these students pour in. And that's what we need. You know, and I know our students are already gobbling the tickets up. But we need that home field advantage, which is our people in the stadium 
you know, loud, and, you know, and, and going and rocking. And then we got to make that a great event. But I think how we enter the field is going to be cool, you know, and that's some things I really just got to see myself. But our folks in there loud and making a true home field advantage, which I think the way the stadium is built and enclosed, we got a chance to really get in there and make some noise. And, you know, what we have to go through, well, we're sitting there trying to call out something when we're on offense. Hopefully that's something these other teams are going to have to start dealing with. And did you decide on a song for I think a song's been intern? decided. I'm, I'm going to let the, I'm gonna let that kind of be seen um, or heard. I guess I should say not seen but heard. Uh, and I don't, you know, I, I've been part of a lot of that, but, I, you know, I don't know about the exact specifics. Some of these things I'll probably get to see as we go. But I think it's just going to be a great – Avenue. And there's going to be things we're going to want to we're going to add to it, you know, as we go. But just kind of get to to get to make our own history there. And I will go back to even at Legion, you know, with that expanse, we always we always felt our fans. And you know, we've led the conference in attendance, you know, I guess around three years. I don't know about you know last year, kind of how all that came out. But you know, we got a chance to get back to the back to that. So we always had a good home foot advantage at Legion. And now here we go. You know, let's let's take the next step. Coach, you're from this state. You drive by Birmingham ever since you were a kid, I'm yep. sure. How important was it and how much does it mean to the city to have a stadium downtown now? It, it it's really is just – and that's why I say from an, a lifelong Alabamian, you know, who, who you know, and, and now a, a Birmingham person, I mean, it's just, I think it's, it's that huge. I mean, I think it's um, – it's special, you know. I mean, it's really special to all of us who are from around here that something we know was needed for a long time and to get to see it come to fruition, it, it's great. And I'll say this, as we go to the airport, you know, we'll see the stadium and then, you know, I get to look up the other day and there's our, there's the blaze head sitting there that we see, you know, home of the blazers. And, you know, I just think of going by that every day and you think about UAB football, that's a big deal. And I asked you this, uh, I think, a few months ago, but now the stadium's completed your favorite part of the stadium. Gosh, mm. I mean, I think it's going to be the the just the actual the 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 way the fans are going to be able to get in there and experience it, which is going to make it you know so nice for us to get in there and play in front of our fans. I mean, all the things that get get the fans in there, you know, because I think that's what's going to make it great. But there's so many great things. I mean, our locker room is is awesome. The the jumbotron. I think all the 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 music and the video. You know, I just think it's just going to be the whole experience. Uh, getting back to the actual game, uh, obviously yep. Liberty's got a uh, you know just a great quarterback, uh, you know really high up on draft boards. Uh, you know how do you plan to kind of kind of either contain them or you know keep your kind of aggressive game plan and just really go after them? Yeah, I mean I think this is a guy that you know that's going to get his he's going to get his yards. I mean you got to try and contain him. Um, you know you've got a head coach who who runs the offense. You know, and I've known Hugh for a while. I mean, there's no doubt he's one of the best play callers in college football. So he does things whether whether it's the way they run tempo, it's it's the quarterback run game. So they have the ones where he just takes off and runs. I mean, and I say this is a running back playing quarterback um, who can throw the ball. You know, and I used to say that in high school football. I talked to a college coach, and I said, "What if the best athlete on the team is he can really run? He's probably the best runner out there, and he can really throw. What would you do?" Well, you know, they didn't really know because nobody was doing that, you know, I'm talking years ago. And as we all progress to these kind of guys, and this, this is a special guy. You know, you're talking about maybe the number three quarterback or, or maybe better on the, from an NFL standpoint, but you've got a coach that knows how to use him. You've got a quarterback who's a real true dual threat in every sense of the word, and then everything they do offensively takes advantage of it. So, you know, I don't know if you're going to stop this guy, but, we, you know, we've got to contain him. We've got to tackle him. You know, and then we've still got to play great pass defense, and then they've got a bunch of other weapons that they use. So it's it's really that whole offense. Um, what did you like out of uh, Hopkins against Tulane? You know, it started with really his game against North Texas, you know, and so when we decided Sunday that we were going to go with him, uh, it was really kind of his body of work moving forward, you know, and I think for us he really had a great week of practice uh, leading up to, you know, some of our best practices we've had. You know, but we've been seeing this focus out of him that we, you know, that we needed to see. But I think, you know, just his ability to get the ball out under pressure. He was very accurate. He managed the game well. And we're talking about two or three things in there that, you know, that obviously we, you know, we want to fix. But it wasn't a lot. And what's what's kind of been the progression or I guess evolution of uh, the tight end Garrett Prince? Yeah. So this is a guy that we really three years ago thought, man, this guy can be 
Gerald Everdish, which, you know, I mean, that's pretty high praise when we go back to 14 when we had Gerald and, you know, that hybrid receiver tied in. So when we got Prince, we saw that in him. You know, this guy was a receiver. Can we get him to, to learn how to block and do the things we need out of a tight end? And now we got a true weapon there. And I think his evolution as a, as a pass catcher, you know, just more and more with his hands. He's still, all, we're still always the blocking part of it. It's a work in progress, you know, but I think um, just the evolution and then finding ways to get him out there. Offensive staff, Coach Vince, those guys have done a great job of, of finding ways to get him the ball. So I'll start with the interception. Um, you know, what were you guys able to do on the back end there in the second half that, you know, allowed you guys to um, change the game? Oh, we just had to give more effort in the sec in the first half. We kind of felt like that we fell off a little bit, like towards the second quarter. So we just had to play very hard and, and look at read our keys, and we'll be we was fine. Why do you feel like you all fell off a little bit? We missed a couple of tackles, and like I think they scored like what two drives back to back. So yeah, we just came in at halftime, and said we need to tackle better, we need to play harder. To, to finish out this game because we knew they wasn't going to give up. Um, what kind of problems do you think Liberty's quarterback is going to pose to the defense? Uh, obviously, he can run. He can throw, too. So we're just going to try to keep him in the pocket, contain him, and play hard, tackle. So as a local player, you know, what, I guess, are your thoughts of the new stadium? Um, you know, you've, you've got to watch it. I guess be built ever since you've been here, and um, you know what do you what do you think about how that's going to change the culture of UAB football? I think it's big, especially with it now being saying like home of the UAB Blazers, because a lot of folks around Birmingham probably just thought that it was like for the city, but now it's saying home of the UAB Blazers, and that's pretty big. And with me seeing like especially playing at Legion since I was a little kid. It's always been special to like play at like a college team stadium. So I know like the high school guys are gonna love being able to get a chance to play there. Obviously, uh, with the stadium, uh, you know it's a big deal this week. Uh, you know, gonna be a lot of distraction. How do you yourself, as well as your teammates, gonna kind of kind of stay focused on game plan and you know practice and doing what y'all need to do to you know kind of put that to the side and actually get a win on Saturday? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be hard, but we had to do it. But the first four weeks already, we're going to just try to take it one day at a time, focus on this day, and try not to think about Saturday. What were you seeing from uh, the Tulane's quarterback that allowed you to get an interception and come close on a couple other ones? Uh, he would, his pre snap reads, he would uh, kind of check, like, the side he wanted to throw it to and look at that man. So I kind of, like, held, held my, I kind of threw him off. I, like, Worked out to the middle field, then came back down. Back on the stadium, I asked coach this question when I asked the players, uh, what's your favorite part of the new stadium? If you could pick one thing that you're excited to kind of show your family or show, you know, for other players that are coming in the next few years, what is the best part in your opinion? To me, 100% is the, um, the tunnel. Like being there, doing all the, uh, the scrimmages, and even the commercial, it was just like being in that one spot and looking out at the stadium, just amazing. And how important do you think it is for the city, kind of like what Joseph was saying, you know, driving past when you come out from the airport even, uh, if you're not from Birmingham, to have that stadium right there in the middle, how much do you think that means to the city? I think it means a lot. I feel like hopefully young kids in the city, like I did want to play in Legion, they're going to go up on the play and protect the stadium. And, like, I don't know about anybody else, but every time I drive past it, I look at it. Like, feel like the first time every time I look at it. Uh, Kobe, uh, we'll just uh, kind of do the same question I've, I've asked everyone. Uh, you know, how are you, uh, as well as your teammates, you know, how do you feel like you are going to stay focused this week uh, with all the distraction of new stadium and, uh, you know, kind of everybody talking about it? You know, how do you stay focused on the game at hand? Uh, I think the main thing is just making sure that like you say, we stay focused on the goal, which is to go out there and win a football game. 
Uh, we know this is, this is going to be a historical week for us, uh, for the city of Birmingham as well. But at the same time, we know we still have a job to do. And um, if anything, it's just uh, kind of anxious to get out there and be back home in front of all of our fans and stuff like that. But it makes it easier. So the main thing this, this week is just focusing on the task at hand, which is we have a great football team coming in here and focusing on them and going out there and putting on and getting a dub. You've been here since the beginning of the return. What, you know, what's the, I guess, the progression or the evolution been like for UAB football to witness? What just, I mean, it must be crazy. Uh, it is. Uh, it Like, we joke around all the time that maybe one day they'll turn it into a movie just because of, like you say, the evolution um, coming. Well, I, I got here in 18, but 17 being ranked uh, 130th out of all the FBS teams in the country. And then seeing what we did the past couple of years, uh, three West Division championships, two conference championships. Um, and then now to add icing on the cake, a new stadium. So I mean, I think that it, it's it's crazy when you sit back and think about it, but it's something that, that should happen. Um, we worked for it, we worked our tail off for it, the people of Birmingham, everybody that's been a part of it, uh, we're grateful, we're thankful. And we just want to go out there and continue to make everybody proud. And then speaking of crazy, uh, what was it like being on the road for a month? Uh, being on the road for a month is crazy. Uh, uh, we talk with Coach Clark all the time, and he preaches about bringing our own energy, uh, especially when you're on the road. Uh, we had amazing, amazing fans that traveled to almost every game that we had on the road. And so we're very appreciative of them. So in a sense, we still had our fans, and whenever we'll get down or you know the ups and downs of the game, we'll come together and make sure that everybody's still up on the sideline, or we'll look to our section in the stadium uh, that had our fans there to kind of you know keep us going. So this this week is going to be special because it, it's not just one section; it's going to be the whole stadium that's going to be there for us. I asked uh, Coach Clark and your teammate this: your favorite part, if you could pick one of the stadium, what would you say? Uh, definitely the Jumbotron. Uh, we rolled by when we came back from New Orleans. Uh, just on the interstate, I was able to see the Blaze head on the back of it and seeing home of the Blazers and Protective Stadium. I mean, that that's probably one of the biggest Jumbotrons I've seen. So uh, that's my favorite part so far. Be cool to see you on the Jumbotron, right? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully y'all will see me for some good stuff, though, for some good stuff. And my, my last question, you know, what does this mean? You've been here through the beginning, kind of just to and I ask your teammate that's driving past the city, even when you have family coming to visit, just that's one of the first things you see. How much does that mean to you, kind of you and Coach Clark and your team kind of help pave the way for that in a way? Uh, I think it, it means a lot. Uh, it means a lot for this team and for the city going forward. Uh, people, Like you said, people who may not have an idea of who the Blazers are uh, driving past that stadium, it makes you wonder, okay, who are they? And then you can look up and we have a track record where you can say, okay, they've been doing some great things. So now it just brings more notoriety to who we are and who this city is. And then you can learn more about the history of what it took to get that stadium. Uh, obviously, Protective's in a, a great location uh, mm -hmm. right there on the interstate, and it's Top Golf. Uh, everyone can see it coming in from Birmingham. But I've also noticed it's a, uh, it's right there in the airspace of uh, Birmingham International. So, is there a, a kind of plan for y'all when there's you know planes coming in, you know, offensively, or maybe you got someone at the airport kind of checking, see when's coming, so y'all can speed up or slow down the offense, get the defense back on. Obviously, that's got to be something y'all got to think about. Yeah, it's. I What's crazy is the first couple times we uh, scrimmaged, scrimmaged there, uh, I saw we saw like three planes just flying overhead. I'm like, that plane kind of close, but I, I remember we we were in close proximity with the airport, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think that may be a little bit above my pay grade, but uh, I think it's pretty cool being able to be there right there in the stadium and look up and see a plane so close. Um, and I, it may it may provide a, a, a natural advantage for us, but I mean we don't know what time they're gonna come in or fly out. So I don't know. I guess we'll have to play it by ear. This this past week at Tulane, you had a uh, one of your fellow linemen go out. How was that adjustment having the other guy come in? And uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Was it smooth? Was it there issues? 
Um, always when you have somebody go down uh, from the starting five, uh, I've been that guy that went down before, and um, instantly uh, there's no panic just because of the way that we prepare. Uh, we have guys who are ready to step in, Jacoby Jones, who's done that multiple times. So uh, we know and we trust in him. Uh, we know that you know it's scary in the moment just because you, you don't want anything to happen to any of your teammates or your opponents uh, because of you know just how the game goes. But uh, it's never a, wor a worry or anything like that just because we know that we have guys who can step up and fill that role and the offense can still click.